chemotherapy at um, SickKids, which is like just down the street. <laughs> um, so I'm a cancer survivor. Um, I graduated high school last week. Um, <laughs> and um, Kind of dipping my toes into research now because um, uh, I'm, I'm working a summer job as a youth advisor at the Sick Kids Research Center. Um, and I'm going to the University of Waterloo in the fall for environmental science. So that's just a little bit. So I'm gonna... um, but really, what I'm here to talk about is mainly my experience regarding um, a national advocacy campaign. Um, that resulted in $30 million from CIHR um, to childhood cancer research. Um, I also advocated uh, for systems and policy changes, um, like the op opening of the Office of Pediatrics at Health Canada, and uh, streamlined approval processes for clinical trials and treatments. Um, and that really does have a lot to do with <laughs> science communication. Um, but that's kind of more the what. Um, the big thing for me is the why of like why why would I do this? Why would I do like dedicate six years of my life to this um, when I can just kind of walk away and live a normal again I hate that word um, but a normal life really. Um, but yeah, I've I've seen many things in my relatively short life so far. Um, when I was going through treatment, I had many friends who were going through the same treatments as I was and the same procedures. Um, and I saw their struggles as they tried to access uh, clinical trials and treatments that could potentially save their lives. Um, I saw some of them succeed in getting access and survive against all odds but I also saw some of them denied access um, because of things like where they lived, how much money their family had, um, and later pass away because of those facts. Um, I saw clinical trials come to Canada too late um, and approval processes take too long for those that had no other options but to hope that they'd come in time to help. Um, I saw my friend who had uh, the same diagnosis as Terry Fox, osteosarcoma, uh, received the exact same treatments that Terry had over 40 years ago, um, and died the same way. In fact, when I learned that, um, I, I found out that there had only been two drugs approved by Health Canada for cancer kids in those 40 years between Terry Fox and my friend. Um, and in all 841 days of my, my chemotherapy, um, not one of those drugs um, was approved by Health Canada for use in kids. Uh, later, I saw some kids get access to a new life-saving treatment called um, CAR T-cell therapy, which gave kids that would otherwise have been terminal um, over a 90% chance of being in remission. Um, but I also saw that while kids in Ontario could get access, um, kids in Manitoba and Alberta couldn't because of the differences in the healthcare systems across provinces. Um, and so these are some of the things that I've seen that I felt that I needed policymakers, politicians, and our government to even just get a glimpse of, because leaders in Canada had to realize that cancer kids desperately needed their help, and that the longer we waited, the more kids, the more of my friends would die. Canada is the best country in the world, um, but I needed people to see that this country was failing kids with cancer. And I wanted to work to get the people with the expertise, um, the know-how and the power to close, to close these gigantic gaps in our system. Uh, so when I had the opportunity to, I went to Ottawa um, representing sick kids as a champion child uh, with the Children's Miracle Network uh, in 2018. 
2017. Um, and I arranged to meet the Prime Minister, the Minister of Health, the Minister of Science, a few MPs, and later, as I continued my work, I had meetings with two Ministers of Finance, three more Ministers of Health, and two Parliamentary Secretaries, um, as well as dozens of MPs, uh, just to get support for, um, and answers, because I couldn't understand why we had a system that was so faulty. Um, so I, like, I arranged all these meetings and I did all that work just to ask these politicians and these people with power questions like, how is it okay that there have been thousands of kids in cancer treatment for 40 years um, given drugs that, while they're standard treatment, are completely off-label, which just means that they were not approved by Health Canada for this use. Um, how is it okay that a Canadian child lives or dies based on where their family lives in Canada? How is it okay that, a, um, that one of my friends can get to a trial in the US and another one can't based solely on the ability of their families to raise $50,000 within a few weeks? And how does it protect Canadian children to have a federal approval system so onerous that kids will die waiting for trials and treatments? Um, how is it okay that kids or kids in other countries can get access to treatments and trials and cancer kids don't, uh, uh, Canadian kids don't, because our approval systems are just seen as too much trouble for such a small market? Um, and I, I, I wasn't getting these answers, so I just kept asking. And sometimes that's really the most important thing about science communication is that it's so inaccessible, as Faye was saying. Um, and I just wasn't getting these answers. Um, or the answers that I was getting was just because that's the system. And so with an army of help uh, from 150 families, uh, meeting with their MPs, um, a legal opinion from Blake's, uh, Blake's law firm, and a storm of national media attention from our PR campaign, uh, we got the leader's attention. Um, but it, took, it still took more than four years of hard advocacy to get the $30 million of funding flowing out across the country um, to research teams. It was slow as hell, and within those four years, nine of my friends had died in that time. And it takes time, it takes effort, it takes sac sacrifice, it takes persistence to overcome that resistance in changing the status quo. I had many meet meetings where I, ex uh, I experienced a little thing that I've started to dub how can I not help you? <laughs> and it's kind of it's it's kind of like Newton, uh, Newton's law of inertia. Like an object at rest will stay at rest unless acted upon, acted upon by a great enough force. Um, and my advocacy organization had to be that pesky, relentless force in order to get at proverbial proverbial. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> to get that proverbial ball rolling. Um, I also want to share that it's not always funding that's needed. Um, in my case, the system was stacked against my friends. Securing roundtables, having calls, and exchanging emails uh, with those at Health Canada, CIHR, and the Mis Ministry of Health were game changers. Um, because without fixing that system, the funding was not going to get kids fast, fair, and safe access to trials and treatments, no matter how much funding we got. Um, I also want to share for like people who want to become youth advocates or youth advocates currently, um, that it's okay to be bold in asking for money um, <laughs> and, and to be determined and relentless in asking questions and asking for meetings, because that's how you make change. Um, What's not okay is to accept the status quo or answers that are not good enough. Um, keep, like, with that, it's also important to just be polite and respectful. 
Um, you want to ensure that the voices of patients, families, frontline healthcare, uh, healthcare providers, um, or, or anyone who has lived experience who will be affected by your research or policy changes, um, you need to make sure that they're heard at that table. Um, partnership with researchers, clinicians, scientists, and experts is essential because science needs to be communicated. Um, and they will provide the evidence-based solutions um, to back up an advocacy campaign um, with facts and credibility. Um, I encountered a lot the question, well, what do you know? You're just a kid. So much so just to dismiss me that I had to drag along some of the, the leading pediatric oncologists and researchers um, into my meetings just so that they can sit at the table and nod their heads and say nothing and just say what she said. No. Because they're essential in that. Um, and it's also important to listen openly to those in power um, so you understand more deeply and are able to adapt and be flexible as you learn more about the systems and they learn more from you. Uh, for example, at the round tables, I would make a statement that ensured that the stories of my friends who were fighting for their lives um, were heard, um, and the uh, oncologists and researchers would explain uh, the barriers they were confronting and the solutions that they thought would work, and then we listened to Health Canada explain the challenges of protecting Canadians' lives through a regulatory system. But that was the key there. We then understood that the real issue was that their protection was killing us. And what we were really asking, what we really needed to ask from Health Canada was to protect us through research, not from research. And that we were asking them to allow the kids with deep support from their medical teams to make informed decisions about their own treatment and to ask, uh, in, in order to access new, often uncertain trials and treatments. Um, and that was a big ask for people whose whole careers were built on protecting us from these uncertain trials and treatments, which were often the only chance that my friends had of survival. Um, and it took m many months and lots of powerful people having many conversations and doing the hard work that resulted in the opening of the Office of Pediatrics at Health Canada. And for the first time in Canadian history, a drug for kids and adults was approved on the same day. Um, and it was hard work, but it is enduring and impactful change, and so it was worth it. Everyone at that round, round table played a role. CIHR, Health Canada, researchers, oncologists, and most of all, the patient advocates, whose respectful but firm voices were heard and deeply understood. I can tell you I have an enduring respect um, for our partners at Health Canada, um, and to this day, I, I thank them for trusting us to, to find a better way forward. Um, yeah, for more information, you can just drop my name on Google, that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, merci, miigwech, um, and thank you for listening.